Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Faith Ministries, where we walk by faith and not by sight. It is Monday, July the 17th, 2023. And oh my God, we had an amazing time on our Friday prayer call in the upper room. Um, this past Friday, we were actually praying to break evil covenants and generational curses. And I'm happy to report to you that the testimonies have begun to flow in. As a matter of fact, they began to flow in right after the deliverance session. So um, one of the people who had attended the session of uh, TAG handle um, harmony in the highest did report that actually during the mass deliverance session, he or she experienced something break off of them in a very powerful way. And so we give God all the praise and all the glory for that. And remember at the end of the uh, session, I had mentioned that you should pay attention to your dreams because once deliverance happens, whether it's automatic or progressive, you begin to see a change in your dream life. And this is exactly what happened um, to a couple of people based on the reports that we have um, been receiving. Um, one lady, Patricia, did actually report that after the, the prayer session, she, when she went to bed, she had a dream where she was in a really filthy bathroom and she was about to start mopping the bathroom when suddenly someone came and mopped it for her, right? So these are signs of deliverance. She didn't have to now mop the bathroom because Jesus had delivered her and he was the one that actually cleansed everything out. So when you start to have dreams where you are sweeping, you are mopping, you are cleaning things, these are all signs that deliverance is actually taking place. In real life, if you're going through a deliverance session, <clears throat> people sometimes do manifest and they manifest in the same way. They manifest by throwing up. Sometimes they burp, sometimes they fart, sometimes they you know, release bodily waste, basically. So if you actually experience these things in dreams as well, then it's a sign that spiritually these things are also being released and deliverance is happening as well. So we praise the Lord for that report. And then um, yesterday, Precious, a lady called Precious sent us a message and she actually uh, made a comment beneath the video. So I'm going to tag the link to the deliverance video below so that if you haven't watched it and you're in need of deliverance and you think that there are evil covenants that are speaking against your life, you can pray along after the fact and God will still deliver you. But Precious, um, hours after our deliverance session, she did actually report that um, a year ago, she had lent someone money and this person completely vanished. And then hours after the, our prayer call, this individual was just locating her and paid her her money. So again, we see that things happen either spiritually in our dreams or in the physical world to begin to tell us that deliverance is actually happening. So when the covenants, evil covenants, um, that tie to poverty or defeat or cycles of defeat and failure, when these things are broken, then every embargo that has been put on your blessings begins to get released. Okay. So you begin to see that in places where doors had been closed in places where there were blockages, these doors begin to open and the enemy begins to release the things that he had held from your life. So I'm truly grateful that the Lord, has been opening doors that the Lord has been breaking the chains off of the individual of us who are at the prayer call and he can break those chains off of you as well if you haven't prayed yet and if you're interested in breaking those evil covenants I strongly encourage you to watch the video share it with your family and friends and go through the process and report your testimony right back on this channel so that it may be able to encourage others as for me after our deliverance session, 24 hours later, the enemy attempted to attack me with a Nephilim spirit. He basically sent a Nephilim spirit after me. So for those of you who don't know what a Nephilim spirit is, these were, according to Genesis chapter 6, these were, these are higher ranking demons, okay, that are a hybrid of the sons, the fallen angels, and the sons of men. So in Genesis 6, when the angels saw that the daughters of Adam were fair, they mated and 
created these giants that were roaming around the earth. These giants were destroyed in the flood. And then they are now high-ranking demons. So we talked about the fact that in the kingdom of Satan, because he mirrors the kingdom of God, they are hierarchies. Okay, so we have these little foot soldier demons going all the way up to the fallen angels. It's a hierarchy. And then and the Nephilim are quite up there, okay, being the sons of the fallen angels. So around 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, while I was, I had woken up to pray, I prayed, I went back to bed. I had an encounter with this Nephilim spirit um, that appeared in form of a boy, like a young boy that was trying to play with so I was in between worlds, in between sleep and being awake when I saw this. And so this kid was trying to engage me, okay, trying to engage me. But the spirit of the Lord said to me, this, he is Nephilim. Do not receive him. Do not receive him. So in that moment, I decided not to engage with this child that was trying to play with me and stuff like that. And at some point... I, I saw, I was in a scene where I was walking to my car and this boy was crouched, like crouching behind my car. And I'm like, him again, what's going on? So he kind of got into my car and he was trying to drive that, my car. So I held his hands, both of his hands, and I looked straight into his eyes and I said, I know who you are you are Nephilim. And in that moment, this boy shape-shifted and showed his true self, which was like a demonic being that looked like an alien. It had huge round saucer eyes, a huge head, tiny body with like thin little long arms and like naked body, but you wouldn't see any any body part, any other physical features. So it kind of looked like it was wearing like a spandex suit that was brown and it had like a bald head and the eyes were so huge. So this demonic being didn't speak, but we looked into each other's eyes and I repeated and I said, you are Nephilim, you are a demon, but you are subject to me in the name of Jesus, according to Luke 10, 17. And the moment I said that, this thing just flinched and tried to like move my hand away. And I said, when I command you and address you in the name of Jesus, you will obey my command. And my Lord Jesus Christ has given me authority over all power of the enemy, all power, not some power, not a little power, but over all power of Satan. So I have power of you in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to die now. So in that moment, because as I was, as I was holding both of his hands like this so that he wouldn't move and I was looking straight into his eyes, interestingly, spiritually, as much as my eyes were looking into his eyes, I could also see my other, my eyes could also see the side of this thing. And he had a, um, it was like a bamboo, like a sh it was like a flute, as short as a flute, maybe like 10, maybe 12 inches. And the edge was sharpened like a spear. And this thing tried to hit me with it. Maybe with another hand, I don't know. You know, spiritually, I don't know how these things work out, but I'm just telling you exactly what I experienced. I'm not trying to interpret it and filter it through the human mind. So in that moment, it tried to push the sharp end of this bamboo spear type thing into my belly. But that was the same moment when I said that the Lord has given me all power of, over Satan, all power, not some, but all according to Luke 10, 19. So in the name of Jesus, I command you to die now. And as I said that, I grabbed that sharp end that was pointed towards me that to stab me. And I stabbed it right back into his belly. And that spirit just completely died. So, spiritual warfare, guys. This is what I came to understand. 
because we experienced so much resistance with the prayers that we had on Friday to break evil covenants. I knew that the enemy wasn't happy. But now, I, we, I also know that these prayers that we are praying, because I was up at 1 a.m. I slept for only one and a half hours that day. I woke up at 1 a.m. and prayed till 3 a.m. just for what we were about to do as far as deliverance was concerned. And it's been my routine to be waking up at 3 a.m. to meet God and pray. Because, you know, when you get into this kind of ministry, so many things can happen and you always want to make sure that you're in right standing with God and that you are spiritually alert. So now I surmise and I conjecture that now, given the level of depth with respect to the things that we had addressed on Friday, breaking those evil covenants off of people, breaking evil curses, breaking generational curses, the enemy found it fit not to send the foot soldiers, but this time to just send the higher ranking demons to oppose the ministry, to oppose me as an individual, but really as a vessel of God, because without God, I am nothing. And to oppose the deliverance and the things that we are doing on this prayer call. So I'd like to add you guys to continue to put me into prayer. But also I give this as a praise report because if the enemy isn't looking for you, if he isn't checking for you, then you're really not doing anything. Because the devil doesn't go around bothering people who are lukewarm. He doesn't go around bothering people who, you know, are chilling out with him in his camp. But the moment spiritually you begin to rise, your spiritual temperature begins to rise and you begin to get into deeper realms in the spirit, then you become a threat to the enemy. So I'd like to re-invite you guys to come join us in prayer this coming Friday. Come join us in prayer. Let's continue to intercede in the upper room. Let's continue to raise our spiritual temperature. Because no matter what the enemy throws at you, you have to know that our God is bigger. Our God is stronger. And it is he that goes before us to fight our enemies for us. So there will always be battles. There will always be pushback. But the victory is ours because Jesus Christ won it for us. It is finished. Catch that revelation, guys, and understand your identity, and your authority in Christ. This coming Friday, we shall be praying to break singleness for those who are looking to get married. Where there has been delay in marriage, for those who want to get married, we are going to pray against the spirit of delay and we're going to break the curse of singleness for those who are looking to get married. Please understand that being single is not a curse. OK, because if you choose to be single, it's not a curse. But if it is your desire to be in a relationship and to be married and it is not happening and you're seeing patterns around that, then now that becomes a curse. OK, so I love you guys. I wanted to share the praise report with you. I wanted to encourage you and I wanted you to know that we are soldiers in the army of God. You should expect spiritual warfare. What you need to be doing then is to outfit yourself and be prepared for war at all times. Bleach yourself to the bone with the word of God because when you engage in spiritual warfare in dreams or in visions, it's the word of the Lord. As you saw with this story of the Nephilim spirit, it was reciting the word of the Lord, Luke 10, 17, Luke 10, 19. It was speaking the word of God that had an impact and that was able to pierce through because Hebrews 412 tells us that the word of the Lord is like a double-edged sword that can cut through soul and spirit. And Jesus tells us we shouldn't be afraid of man that can kill the body. We should be afraid of God who can kill not only the body, but the spirit and the soul. I love you guys. Please join us in the upper room this Friday to pray to break the curse of singleness. For those of you that feel that this is your portion and there has been a delay in this area, Share this video with as many people as you can and share the link. We will be meeting live right here on this channel on Friday, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time in the United States, which will be Saturday morning, 1 a.m. in the United Kingdom, 2 a.m. in Southern Africa, 3 a.m. in East Africa. Ciao. Until next time. Bye-bye.